First Corinthians 14. This is the reason why you might you must prioritize speaking in tongues for long. Amen. This is the reason from verse number. Verse 12. Heaven saw you, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that you may excel to the defying of the church, the defying of the body, the one that filleth all in all. And then he says, the body is the church. Verse 13. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in a known tongue pray that he may interpret. That he may do what? Amen. Interpret. Do you understand what you're praying? Pray that God will give you interpretation. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you do not know something, ask God. Ask God. Not everything comes by teaching. There is a place of asking and receiving. Hallelujah. Even in prayer. Amen. Amen. Is it ask God. So literally, you will ask God to give you. And then when you ask him, you must be able to also perceive that he has given you. Because you may continue asking something that he already gave you. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So he says, let him pray. Let him do what? Pray. pray that he may interpret. Look at that from the Amplified. Therefore the person who speaks in a known tongue should pray for the power. You see? For the power. That's the reason why we pray. We pray for the power. Glory to God. We pray for the power. So literally, you ask God to give you the power. This is different from the power that James says. By praying for long, you generate the power. Alright? So literally, you need to get to that place whereby you know God has now given you the power. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And this is the place of Acts 1 and verse number 8. Let's first go to John. I mean, Mac. Amen. Amen. So if you do not know something, don't wait until praise is done and then you come to the man of God. You are in the most adventurous position to ask God. One of the privileges you need to appreciate or acknowledge is you are in the presence of God. There now no one can talk to God for you. You are contacting God yourself. That's the beauty of prayer. So don't get shy to ask. Otherwise, don't also assume you have when you don't have. Yes, sir. It's better to ask, to be genuine to God and say, God, this one I don't know, teach me. It can come as a thought. And then you know surely God is going to teach you. Amen. 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 Go to the book of Luke chapter 10. Then we come to Mark. There is when a man, you know, there are two things. There is receiving the spirit and there is being filled with the spirit. To be filled with the spirit is deliberate. You choose to be filled. You receive the Holy Spirit once. You receive the Holy Spirit once. 
You cannot only limit the Holy Spirit to being power. Because it's more than power. That's why it's specific. It's as much as you're zealous about spiritual gifts, there is one thing that I expect each of you to appreciate. To ask for power to interpret. This is New Testament, right? Yes. So we graduate in revelation. There are certain things we have known or grown knowing, but some of them we get to learn even as we grow. Because you'll find some people say, no, you don't need to ask. You already have the Holy Spirit. That's true. But particularly this gift of interpretation, you don't have it. You don't have it. You have to ask. Otherwise, everyone would be doing it. Why isn't everyone a prophet? They haven't asked. James said, you, you don't have because you don't ask. Praise God. Mm -hmm. So don't assume that you know, don't assume that you have when you literally don't have. Get to the place of asking God. He says, you shall ask anything in my name. That word ask is the word used to mean you shall demand it to be done to you with urgency. Hallelujah. That means you know what it is, you know what it can do. If you can have it, you can do so much. So you place a demand. It is just more than asking. Asking in love. What is this in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 1? Walk in love and desire spiritual gifts. Again, that word desire is capsulated in prayer. Prosiche. It's capsulated in prayer. So there is no way you're going to miss out if you don't have a desire. That asking is what I'm calling desire. Praise God. Amen. Don't expect prophet Isaac just to say, hey, you receive the gift. It may not be on you because it must fit together. Amen. 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 Look at Luke 11 verse number. Let's begin from verse number. Number, number 7. From verse 8. I say unto you, 11 verse number 8, I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him because he is a friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needed. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Praise God. Verse 10. For everyone that asks, receives. Are you there? Yes, sir. Amplified, verse 10. For everyone who asks and keeps on asking. So it's not once. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everyone who asks and what? Yes, keeps on asking. Yes, sir. But even when you're asking, you're not begging. Because you cannot beg God. You are a son, right? Yes, sir. If you ask him, he will give you. Amen. If he doesn't give you that day, it doesn't mean he has refused. You ask again. Hallelujah. Even if he doesn't, you ask again. Wow. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Why do you need 100 people every Tuesday service? You give him reasons. You ask again. You give him reasons. You ask again. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Keep on asking. asking. It says, everyone who keeps on asking does what? Receives. But even this asking, we are asking in love. We are asking in faith. Because that is desire. You are tied to it even before you have it. Amen. You ask in faith. This is what it means by asking in faith. You believe it is there and it's for you. But there's a barrier. There's a distance. So what gets you there is literally prayer. Hallelujah. So as you pray, you pray until you literally realize that the thing that you wanted has actually come. Yes, sir. And then suddenly light is all over your body. Hallelujah. You know so many things at one moment. Just like this. Amen. You realize the relief you wanted has come. Amen. The burden that you had has gone. Amen. Because you kept asking in faith. Yes, Even those, he said, those who pray for the sick, pray in faith. Yes. Believing that it's already there. Believing that it's already done. Amen. 
We are not asking for things which are not there. Yes, if a man is looking for a spare part for a car, he makes an order in Japan. It is there. Yes, sir. Just because we don't have a factory in Uganda does not mean it's not there. Mm. Yes, you make an order. Hallelujah. You place an order. You place a demand. Amen. Otherwise, you cannot just make a call. There is a price attached to it. Yes, not everyone. Not everyone. Not everyone is anointed. Not everyone is a prophet. It is the man that attaches volume. Whatever is asked. Price. Praise God. Amen. Amen. It will come. Amen. And here is the currency. Faith. Amen. Faith is the currency. Yes, it will push you. It will enable you to press on. Amen. You will persevere. Yes, you will not Lord. even mind about the pain. You will not mind about the hunger. You will not worry that you are the only one praying. It is now you and God and you and you and you and you, God. Yes, Amen. Yes, sir. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You place value. You attach meaning. Hallelujah. In part of giving the meaning is the understanding with reason. Amen. Just imagine if you had so much power that you could heal the lame just in the public street. How many people would get born again? That's why he says, come and reason together. Let's discuss. How do you want this business to be? Amen. Amen. It happens in prayer. So literally, you are supposed to be laughing in prayer because of the jokes you make with God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Are you understanding? Yes, sir. Yeah. Learn to enjoy prayer as well. Amen. Because you must conceptualize and believe that God is before you and you're speaking to him. Hallelujah. Sometimes it becomes so real to me that I just do like this. I'm just there and I just kneel down. Glory. Sometimes pacing makes me feel like I'm moving away from God. So I sit there and be like, goodness, this is God speaking to me. Hallelujah. I refuse to be busy. Mano, Sagraida, Makola, and then you press on. Amen. Not every time you're pacing, listen to the Holy Ghost. At one moment, He's telling you, kneel down. At one moment, He's telling you, stand like this. At one moment, He's telling you, do like. Just it's sweet, I'm telling you. Yes, it's so sweet to pray. Hallelujah. In the Spirit. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Keep on asking. And then he says something. Receives and he who seeks and keeps on seeking finds. And to him who knocks and keeps on knocking, the door shall be open. Verse 11. What father among you, if a son asks for a loaf of bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? Is there a father like that? No. You ask for water, then he gives you what? Paraffin. <laughs> and then when you're taking paraffin, he laughs. That, is there a father like that? No. Even when the kids take paraffin by mistake, you rush the hospital. Yes, sir. Now, intentionally giving is impossible. Yes. Even a wicked man, yes, sir. the one who is a witch, will not allow to give food when it comes to, it comes to giving food. Yes. He will give good food. Yes, sir. Because no one wants anyone to suffer. Yes. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Can you imagine something that anyway, that would divert a little bit. Let's just stick to this. Verse 13, let's read again. If then, if you then, evil as you are, know how to give good gifts, gifts that are to their advantage, to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask and continue to ask Him. Do you see that? Yes, sir. Oh, praise God. Amen. Verse 14. Now Jesus was driving out a demon that was dumb that it occurred that when the demon had gone out, the dumb man spoke and the crowds marveled. But some of them say, He drives out blah, blah, blah by demons of this, right? Yes, sir. Now, there was a lot that was happening here. But you see, 
He was talking about the Father. He says the Father is rich with everything. But he just can't give you because you want. Mm. No, he doesn't give you because you want. That's why every time Jesus would move to a man who had even a problem of the eye and say, what do you want me to give you? He knows the eyes have a problem. Yes, sir. But he wants your participation Hallelujah. to get it from him. Amen. There is something that provokes God to do certain things. Hallelujah. It's the way we do things. Amen. 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 We've had people who say that time we fasted and we asked, we blessed the man of God. And it happened. Amen. I mean, this is scripture. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we must learn at all times to ask with reason. Ask with a desire. Bless faith upon the things you ask. And don't stop asking. Keep asking. Yes, sir. Keep asking what Paul says. Keep praying. Part of what you call prayer is asking. And part of what you call prayer and asking is intercession. It's petition. All those are types of asking. Petition means to ask for the right. Intercession means to demand for someone the right thing. To be done for him. So you're literally asking. You're asking God. Glory to God. Amen. And that's what maintains fellowship. Amen. Otherwise, God would have given you everything, right? Yes. He has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. But how come now he's telling us, ask? Because in our coming to him is the fellowship built. Hallelujah. That's how we keep relationship. Wow. If God gave you everything, you run away. He knows. <laughs> he knows. A man is very funny. You will just run away and never come back again. Praise God. Amen. The last time he gave the devil everything, almost everything, not everything. You know what happened? He said, now even what you gave me, since I have everything, you don't have everything now because you gave me everything. So he wanted to fight God. And God said, you fool, get out of this place. Praise God. Amen. He doesn't want us to assume that we have everything so we don't need him. As a matter of fact, we have everything in God. That's the point. Amen. Not everything in you. Yes, sir. That's why it says acknowledge everything good in you in Christ. You see that? Hallelujah. You have everything in God, not in you. I wish you understood that even. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Yeah. So if you understand that whatever blessing God has given us is spiritual, then you will pray for it is materialization. Lord, you have spoken these things boldly and you said we have power. Where is the power? We demand it to come in the name of Jesus. This week we are walking, you make declarations based and standing from that place. Those are prayers that change. That's why Paul is saying, I'm not interested in just people praying in tongues. Ba, 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 ba. And by the way, not just ba, 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 da, 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 raga, sanda, ba, ba, higa, ba, da, ba, da, ba. <laughs> You're praying without focus. Palagusta, Manda Mama, Pando Bosivi, Paradondomo, Pakibo, Pamama, Pemana, Tana, Titi, Titi, Paradondomo. You're praying without focus. <laughs> Praise God. Look at what he told Joshua. Go to Joshua 1 and verse number 7. Prayer begins to release power when your eye is fully there. When your entire being is fully there. That's what Jesus would say, close your eyes when you pray. When he said, close the door, he meant the eyes and the windows. Because that's where light comes from when you're in the house. He says, if the eye is full of light, the whole house is full of light. So if the eyes are closed and you focus on the Father, he said, a lot will happen. Because it will not take you long before you're translated and you begin to pick up that same grace and glory. Yes. Part of the reason why, you see, we, we read the other time, Matthew uh, and Mark, when the Bible says, while Jesus prayed, 
His countenance changed. It is what he was seeing that imparted light on him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. It is what he was seeing and much more what was in him. Because listen, this is how it works. The nature of a Christian is this way. Is this way. A Christian is like a star. The star increases its brightness from inside. That's why he says the man that prays is like a dynamo. That when you ride the bicycle, the more you ride it, the more the light comes. So it's solely dependent on you. Amen. Amen. That's what God told me when we pray. Joshua 1 and verse number 7. From verse number 5. Amen. Then number two, be focused. Not only in prayer, even after prayer. Be focused. Because the thing that you are praying for may end up persecuting you or the thing you are praying against ends up being stronger. So you need to know what God has said in prayer and be focused on it. He said, don't look around. Look at that from the Amplified. Verse 7. Only you be strong and very courageous that you may do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that ye may prosper wherever you go. Amen. Message, I say it this way. Give it everything you have, heart and soul. Make sure you carry out the revelation that Moses commanded you. So it was not just a law. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7, 10. Doctor, listen. Don't talk, okay? Praise God. So it's revelation. It can be the word for the season. It becomes like a law. Now you will not take the law as do, do not, do, no. It's a revelation. Because you need to know when God speaks, it becomes a law. That means nothing can stand against it. Nothing can break it. Nothing can overpower it. Nothing can resist it. It becomes a law. Hallelujah. Give it everything you have. Heart and soul. Heart and soul. The continued heartfelt prayer. Honest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man avails much, avails tremendous power. Prayer of a righteous the continued heartfelt prayer of a righteous man avails, make a tremendous power available. That continued focus is what is selling you. Don't look around. You can choose to be so focused on the assignment upon your man of God. So focused that you'll be blessed by it. You can just be so focused on the assignment God has put upon you in every department you are in until you see the results. Praise God. One thing you need to know is as people are doing what matters to them and focusing on their responsibilities, some other person who is talking about them is looking at them and is saying, ah, the other man, ah, yeah, the other man can pray. For him is praying and is not saying, please look at me. 
He's not looking at someone praying. For him, he's just praying and for you, looking at him. I don't know if you make, is that making sense to you? One thing you need to know is you're being cheated. You're cheating yourself by focusing on someone when you're supposed to be doing something. You're cheating on yourself. Because that man will get done with his assignment and for you, your assignment was looking at him. When it comes to asking you, you realize you don't have an answer. You'll only remember the person who was praying. That's how the devil cheats. You're in church, but you don't receive anything. Praise God. It also happens in prayer. As you pray, focus. Don't look aside. You are praying and God gives you a revelation. Focus on it. We are here and they're giving us directions. Focus on it. Focus on it. Because that's the will of God at that time. Focus on it. Enter deep on it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. When he says don't move left and right, he's actually talking about faith. That's what James says. A double-minded man, you see. You cannot say this and say this. You cannot, you know. So he says be focused. That is faith. Faith delivers accurate results. Focus on it. It is only in the definition of man that it takes long to wait. But in the timing of God, it is at the perfect time. So you find some people say, even if it takes 10 years, be patient. It's not really that it's supposed to take 10 years. It's the definition of man. It is an attitude. It's an, a mentality in your mind that the thing takes long. Things of God take long. No, it's not like that. It's the stronghold in your mind. How come it's working for others? It's because you imagine that everything God does is fast, so it takes time to come to the earth. It's not like that. It's the mentality which is wrong, which must be destroyed today in Jesus' name. God is always fast in whatever he does. He's fast. It is even an abuse to say God is slow and man is faster than God. <laughs> it is funny. It's really very funny. Man cannot be faster than God. Never. A hundred times, a thousand times, no. He can never be faster than God. God is always fast. Amen. He does things fast, accurately fast, as it is time when you need it. The time you think you have delayed or God has delayed is actually the time which you should appreciate that you didn't need it at that time. Hallelujah. All right. So he says, give it your full heart and soul. Make it, make sure you carry out the revelation that Moses commanded you. Every bit of it. Don't get off track. Either left or right. So as to make sure you get to where you are going. Message version. Don't get lost on the road. Don't pray until you now realize, eh, hey, I feel like I'm tired. You see? You end on the way. You don't reach where you're going. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you enjoying prayer? Are you enjoying prayer? Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Shout a big amen. Hallelujah. 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 The third one for you to have results is no, that God wants to give you. His willingness is what I'm concerned about. For you have to have results, effective results in prayer. You need to know that God is willing to give you. He is able and willing. He is able and willing. Only if you abide by the instructions. If you follow whatever, you know, it's powerful. It's really powerful. Let's just get some amazing truth here. Look at that from James. James chapter 1 from verse 5. Amen. 
Are we learning something? Don't worry, we're about, we're about to finish. This is the last segment, right? By the time I come, you know, really, we're going to finish. But it shouldn't be. Some of the important nuggets of prayer, you want to know them? Just put this aside on top of that so that I don't forget this. Don't mix with what I'm sharing, right? Important nuggets of prayer. Some important things to note about prayer. Number one, schedule to pray. Don't pray by chance. Schedule to pray. Program. Number two, don't hurry God. Don't hurry God. Don't hurry God. That is to say, don't mind the end or the time of ending. There's some beautiful secrets I've learned in life that have worked for me. Worked for me. If you must enjoy prayer, don't hurry God. He may tell you, pray for this few minutes, 30 minutes, yet the answer comes at 25. He can tell you now it's done. All right? Or he can tell you, no, this one. You've read 30, but carry on to 50. Do you know you can know that I need to pray for the next 20 minutes? Do you know you can know? Yeah. So don't hurry God. When you pray or when you come to pray, consider you are in the hands of God. Whatever happens here, it's of God. Whatever happens here, God has determined it. And we are guided. We are guided by whoever comes to lead. Maybe me, maybe Mr. Mark, my wife, or someone else. Amen. So don't hurry God. Don't mind the time of ending. Just for you, you're supposed to be praying. Important nuggets of prayer. All right. Now go back to James. We continue with what I was sharing. Having results in prayer. Effective praying. James 1 verse 5. The Bible says it this way. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Let him ask of God. Wisdom, why? Because wisdom is the thing that everyone needs. Wisdom is the principal thing. You start with wisdom. To fear the Lord, wisdom will teach you how to fear God. If you lack wisdom, ask of God. So it's the spirit of God. Of course, I know Christ has been made unto us wisdom. That is for the mature man who understands what they're talking. But for the Nepios, they, they have to ask. Ask for wisdom. The time you realize you don't have wisdom, ask for wisdom. Even if wisdom was there, at least your conscience will know you ask for, God, for, for wisdom. But look at this. He says something. Ask God that gives to all men liberally and are breaded not and it shall be given him. You see that? Verse 6. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering for he that wavered is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think. Can you, can you, can you imagine that? Praise God. Look at that from the message. Amplified. Verse 6. Amplified. Only it must be in faith that he asks with no wavering, no hesitation, no doubting. That's what we call by wavering. No hesitation, no doubting. Will it happen? What if it doesn't happen? How is it going to happen? If you're hesitating, that means God already is willing to give you. So there must be a force you're resisting, which is of God. Because if you're hesitating the work of God, that means God is already coming to where you are because you've asked in faith. Amen. Look at that again. Without hesitation and doubting. For the one who wavers, hesitates and doubts is like the blowing surge out of a sea that is blown hither and there and tossed by the wind. Verse 7. For truly, let not such a person imagine. Let him not what? Imagine that he will receive anything he asks for 
from the Lord. So, that tells me also, it's very important. He says, before I come to, let him not think. Number three, I said, God is what? Willing. Able and willing to give you. That's why he says, let him not think that he shall receive anything from the Lord. You only receive what has been given, right? But it can also be given and you refuse to receive. And did you get that? You can refuse to receive what has been given. So here God is clear about his giving. He gives liberally and upbraided not. Without partiality, he gives to everyone who wants. But the receiving is by faith. Which means the answers all over are everywhere. You switch into prayer, you see answers. But you can see them are far off. Now, for you to actualize them to come into your life, you need that faith factor to believe that this is actually mine. Lord, I thank you for I have received it. So you have to mention those words. Lord, I thank you. I have received it. It's alive in me. It's working in me. I can feel it. I attest to it. It is working. So when you know it is already in you, you will not ask again. Every time you want to ask, you realize, hey, but I received the other time. Thank you, Lord. I have wisdom. Thank you, Lord. I have, I have faith. I, I, I have mercy. I have peace in me. You'll be thanking God. So you'll be appreciating the giver to the receiver. Look at that in Matthew, Mac again. If I give you the fourth one, and then we pray for some few minutes, and then we can take a few questions. Mark. Mark. Mark 11. Amen. 11 verse 20, 22. Amen. 22 says, And Jesus replying said unto them, Have faith in God constantly. Amplified. Verse 23. Truly I say, I tell you, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt, at all in his heart, but believes that what he says will take place, it will be done for him. Praise God. Okay, let's take from the King James 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and thou be cast into the sea. And who? He who does not doubt. You look at that. And shall not doubt. Who? He is the one that is praying. Amen. Amen. He that is what? Praying. And shall not doubt in his heart. But what? Shall believe that those things which he says Shall come to pass. That means you prophesy in prayer. That means you prophesy in prayer. Oh, I thank you, Lord. I reach home when everything is well. You see, you prophesy. Shall believe in his heart or whatsoever he says shall come to pass. That's the way I prophesy. When I come in, I come and declare national prophecies. It's because I believe that whatever I say shall come to pass. I am in prayer. Praise God. That's why I told you the other time, the three fulfillments. You need faith. You need prayer. You need prophecy. Are we flowing? So he says, look at that. Look at that. Shall come to what? He shall have, I sing that. He shall what? Have. Whatsoever he said. <laughs> I wish you understood that. So if you want car. Car. The word car. As long as it's still in your system. You have it. That's what we mean by faith. That is what faith is. But your problem is you want to see car entering. Say yes car. I believe by seeing. 
Now for you, it will take long. You have to first go and dig. You have to first go and work. And then you come now and say, God promised me this car 10 years ago. Finally, I've had it. Hi! So as you pray, it is not because you've done anything whatsoever you shall say. Because also blessing is in saying. God blessed Adam and say. Be fruitful. He saved the blessing. Amen. Oh Lord, I'm blessed in my health. I'm blessed in my mind. Oh, I declare and decree. This week, I refuse to foresee in the name of Jesus. I am moving in divine health. Amen. I don't lack any good thing in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because what you need most is peace. Why does it tell you that? So that you may have peace. The other aspect of effective praying is peace. When you have peace, for you to know that you have prayed is until you have peace. Not until you have the car. Not until you have the money. Not until God tells you, I have given you the money for rent. No. Even if he doesn't tell you, as long as you are at peace, you know it will be fine. I don't have to worry about it anymore. I don't have to get worried about it. I know in the presence of God is everything. So it's up to him to know which one comes first. Maybe he wants me to learn the word now. By the time I go back there, I find everything is sorted. But some people lose when they are being tried. They lose the time with God. They lose even what they're going to get. By the time they come back, they would be at zero. You need what? Peace. Amen. So that now your praying is not every time about the job. Lord, my husband. Lord, but you say it. I'll give birth to twins. But now these are only not twins. If he said you'll give birth to twins, maybe he's talking about your daughter who will give birth to twins. Interpret prophecy in a wider range. Don't just limit everything to you. Lord, you said I'll drive a black car. Maybe he said to your friend, the one who was next to you because his fate was higher than yours. So understand prophecy in a wider range. Amen. Don't be disturbed occasionally with things. Don't look around. Amen. He shall have whatsoever he said. Did you see that? Look at verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire. I told you that number one, right? When you pray, Believe uh -huh. that do what? That you receive. Then you shall have. James said you will not receive anything from the Lord. That means to be transferred from his hands to your hands. Now, Jesus tells us in Mark that if you stand in prayer and believe. Alright? You will have. Whatever he has given you, literally you receive and have it. That is now believe and keep it. Because you can have an outside, when you go, you lose it. But this one says, as long as you're confessing it, confession will keep the possession. You don't confess to possess. You keep the possession by confession. Because the devil is stealing from people all the time. He's stealing this. He's a thief, right? So to keep it there, you have to keep it by faith. So I told you number one, you do what? Have a desire number two. Don't look around. Don't look around. Don't look around. Be focused. Number three, God is willing and willing to give you, right? Number four, the peace of God. Receive the peace from 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 God. Look for the peace every time you're praying. Where your heart settles for peace, that is the answer. That is the answer. God can just tell you, don't worry about that thing. And that is enough. That is enough. Sometime we come to church, not just to be given things, but also to be told that God is concerned about you. And that what you need, God has already sorted it. You have peace. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Have you understood something? Those four things as you pray, have it in mind. And make sure you're prophesying all the time. You're prophesying all the time. You're making war in prophecy. Making declarations in prophecy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. 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 All right. So let's read this prophecy and then we continue to pray for some few minutes to thank God. Amen. Leviticus 26. This is a prophecy God gave me when we were just praying. It reminded me what Pastor David had prophesied last year over us. He just reminded me there. Leviticus 26 is somewhere in the Bible, right? From verse 9. From verse 3. 26 and verse 3. Message version. If you live by my decrees and obediently keep my commandments, I will send the rain in their seasons and the ground will yield its crops and the trees of the field their fruit. Verse 5, you will thresh until the grape harvest and the grape harvest will come until planting time. You will thresh until the grape harvest and the grape, and then, so harvest will follow each other until even the planting time. You will have more than enough to eat and will live safe and secure in the land, in your land. Verse 6, I'll make the country a place of peace. Did you see that? You'll be able to go to sleep at night without fear. I'll get rid of the wild beasts. I'll eliminate the war. Verse 7. You will chase out your enemies and defeat them. You're not saying amen. amen. Five of you will chase a hundred. And a hundred of you will chase ten thousand. And do away with them. I will give you my full attention. I will make sure you prosper. And make sure you grow in numbers. You see. So when we are praying for numbers. God just reminded me. said, Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Go to that prophecy right now. Praise God. Praise God. I will make you what? I will make sure you. You prosper. Who is doing it? God. He make, he's not going to make sure that you prosper. Amen. Whether in health or sound or mind, whatever it is, physically, spiritually, he will make sure you prosper. Amen. So it's in the hands of God. I don't have to worry about how to prosper. He will teach me something, right? Every time I'm, he says, if you will be willing and obedient, because this year he told us one of the steps to the fullness of God is instruction under his feet. He has put all things under his instruction. That's what I told you. That's what it means. Being a good disciple. Just being available. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. You know why? I am thinking every time God is telling us to pray at this time. Maybe he's preparing us for, for Pakistan which is hot. Maybe he's preparing us for India or Libya. You know, some people pray only at night, right? Maybe he's preparing us. If you can endure 30 degrees, now you can go. Iraq. So you will not be complaining. God, now the sun is so hot like Jonah in the Bible, not this one. This one is good. <laughs> Praise God. So I, 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 I stopped complaining about anything. When he says wear the suit, I will do it. Instructions are very important. I'm preparing you for Saudi Arabia. For Egypt. How will you stand? You're, <laughs> it's like some people who went with Paul. And things were tough. He said, no, 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 me, I'm going back. I'm going back. I, I'm, I cannot afford one meal per day. Me, I grew from Buganda. Matoke, What? Malewa. Mbale. Now there's no Malewa on the other side. If you're to buy, you have to export very expensively. You have to get used to eating some things which you don't, you don't know. Oysters. Anyway. 
He says, I'll do what? I'll make sure you prosper. I'll make sure you grow in numbers. And keep my covenant with you in good working order. Not sometimes when things are like this, be like, God, have you forgotten us? You promised us that we are dominating the city. What has happened? No. In good working order. The day you don't have transport to church, you don't be like, God, what has happened? You've changed your mind. You walk, you realize that the border body will say, please, can I take you? Where are you going? You come here and be like, okay. No problem, I've paid for you. You did not get it. <laughs> In good working order. Which means you will never be scared that God has left you. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you. I'll be with you in good working order. Coming to church like this, that means actually we are still in good working order with God. Because how can you stay in the presence for more than six hours? You must be in a good working order. Some people just appear. Five minutes, I have talked to God. They disappear. They don't have a good working order. Everyone who prays for two minutes just know they are having a bad working order with God. Either themselves are far from God or there are certain things that are not fulfilled with God. Praise God. Say I have a good working order with God. Say it again. Lift up your right hand and say, Father, I thank you for the good working order. You will prosper me. You will make me increase in number. You will make me increase in wisdom. You make me increase in understanding. In the name of Jesus, I declare and decree I am never small after today. I am in good working order with God. God has not left me. Amen. You see, when we say lift up your hand, it's an instruction. I'll also read for you when you fail instructions. I'll read for you. Don't worry. Because let me first read for you the good instructions. <laughs> Praise God. Verse number what? Number 10. You will still be eating from the last year's harvest. When you have to clean out the bounds to make room for the new crops, I will set my residence in your neighborhood. I won't avoid or shun from you. Which means God runs away from some people. <laughs> All right. God, the one you're saying I will never live, no, he runs away from some people. Say, ah, you've come. Ah, yeah. God can fear some people. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> let me leave that one there. I will stroll through your streets. I will be your God. You will be my people. The word stroll there means I will have evening walks with you. That's what it means. Just come and say, man, let, let's have a walk. Literally, God can tell. Just walk around, speak in tongues. He's strolling with you. And you realize you're not on a hurry. Just speaking in tongues, Zakata. Then he shows you pray for that one. Shatekaba. Ramo. You're with him. You're just walking. You're strolling with him. Because you're in full obedience with God. God can now walk with you anywhere. Jalamanda. Rekato. Shakata. Just go to church. Go, just go to church. You realize you're in church and someone is there. You need to pray for. He says, okay, lay hands on this one. Then go to the other side. Shatekaba. Rabasata. Malambrokete. Krasova, Kratano, Varusta, Elambra, Karuza. Then it tells you go to Leviticus 26 and verse 10. I will give you full attention. I will make sure I will prosper you because you are with me. Let's draw, let's continue walking. I will prosper you. Uh, you know, he was telling Abraham the things. I will make you a great success. Move to where I'm taking you. I will make you rich and I will make everyone bless through you. I am not, I have now, now, I have now stopped giving blessings to people. That's what God said. We only have one center, Abraham. Amen. If you want a job, Abraham. If you want a wife, Abraham. If you want a man, Abraham. If you want a car, Abraham. If you want spiritual gifts. That's how God is going to make our church to be valuable. Literally, God will put everything. Like people will be far, but they will be seeing a strong anointing over the church. And it's like God has pointed that place. Let's go. 
is like the star of the Magi. Why Bethlehem? The young man was just very small, not knowing anything, but he was already commanding worship. Praise God. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. And say, Jesus, I give you praise. I love you. Thank you, Lord, for saving my life, for, for, for make, saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for giving me grace today. I receive the favor. I receive understanding. I receive wisdom. Speak in tongue in a minute. Office is a weapon. Rabo Shanta la Baba. Marabo Goshata. Amos 9, verse 11. Amos 9, verse 11. Message version. This is what my man of God gave us. You see, he says, I will give you my full attention. Can you imagine that it will now be you who is the duty of God? That God will look at you and polish you. I will give you my full attention. No one is there your fullness. It's part of the thing. I will give you full attention. Can you imagine God is giving full attention to our church? <laughs> he is not divided in responsibility. God is fully here. If God is fully here, even the angels, Michael and everyone. The Holy Spirit, Jesus, he is here. He is giving us full attention. He said, I will, I, will, I will polish you. Whatever has not been okay with your life, I will put it in order. I will correct you myself. <laughs> if you are missing a limb in the realm of the spirit, he will give you. If you are lacking utterance in the realm of the spirit, he will give you. He is giving you full attention. If you are giving something full attention, you will remove every dart. He will not be blaming the item you made. No. He will remove every dart. He says he prunes that you may bear more fruit. So if there is a problem with your eye in the realm of the spirit, he, he, will, he will work on it. He will not punish you. No. He will not kill you. He will not test your way. No. He will give you full attention to see to where is the problem. Can we sort it out? He is giving us full attention. He is making us to prosper. Ha. Amos 9.11 But also on the judgment day I will restore David's house that has fallen into pieces. Verse number 12 And sees what's left of the enemy. Edom plus everyone else. Under my sovereign judgment, God's decree, he will do this. Verse 13 Yes, indeed it won't be long now. Ah, you think it's the last day? No, he's saying now. Amen. He gave us this prophecy. Amen. Amen. You remember in November? He gave us this prophecy. He said, yes, it won't be long now. God's decree. Things are going to happen so fast. Your head will swim around. Allah cast over. Your head will swim. Look at that. He said, your head will swim. Literally, the entire body will be swim because the head is guiding the whole body. Hallelujah. Ah, as a man thinks, so he is. Hallelujah. You get it? Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. He said, your head will swim. Amen. Literally, you're imagining in abundance. That's what he's talking about. You're imagining in abundance. You're imagining in lack of luck. You lack luck. You don't have luck. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you lack luck. You don't have luck. Just imagine. Just imagine that. One thing fast on its heels of the other. You won't be able to keep up. Everything will be happening at once. Carrizo, Vrahata, Brekedila, Gozai. 
if it is if it is if it is a job if it is a house you realize you're constructing you're opening a business you are flourishing in church you, you are having this even wedding is there even this i even revelation god not problem after problem that's that the end of the story has come praise god is it things will happen at first very at once at first praise god at once very fast look at that look at that everything will be happening at once in everywhere you look blessings <laughs> everywhere you look blessings blessings like wine pouring off the mountains and the hills i will make everything right again for my people say amen Ah, yeah. They will rebuild the ruined cities. That is to say, those who backslid, they will come back. That is to say, those who left church, they will come back. I will reconstruct them again in the spirit of meekness. And I will say, we have come to join hands again. This is our charge. Lakrade, shanta, baba, baba, ya. Praise God. Who will do it? God. God will do it. Hmm. I love the Holy Spirit. They will plant vineyards and drink good wine. Vines and grapes and figs are a sign of prosperity in Israel. Like the Bible says, and Solomon made figs and vines very common in Israel. Because it's a very expensive tree. You cannot just plant anywhere. But if it is in every household, that country is rich. That is also just to say everyone will own a car. Something that looks to be not okay. He says, I will make it happen. Just imagine. Everyone is driving. Okay. That's imagination, right? They will plant vineyards and drink good wine. They will work their gardens and eat fresh vegetables. And I will plant them. Plant them on their own land. I will plant them. Plant them on their own land. I'll plant them. Plant them on their own job. I'll plant them. I'll plant them on their own good positions. I'll plant them on the gifts of the Spirit. I'll plant them on that thing that will enjoy. This is my office. I'll plant them. Plant them myself. God will plant you this season. God will establish you this season. Mr. Lorraine was leading us. And he said, God, foundation is firm. He will establish us Amen. on a firm foundation. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Look at that. They will never again be uprooted. Hallelujah. They will never again be uprooted. From the land I have given them, God, your God, says so. Amen. Say it is permanent. Say it is working. Say it is my time to rise. See, God has given us a promise. He said, this year, I'll give you land. This year, I'll give you a car. Just, just agree with it. Because it's anyway God going to do it. Because it will happen. Oh, goodness. Are we thinking so high more than we ought to know? It's just good for us to think that way. He said, let not that man think he can receive. So it's also about thinking that you can receive. I wish you understood that. Yeah. Yeah. I think I have received. The other side he said, let not that man think he can receive. The man who asks in without faith, right? But the man who asks in faith, let him think that he has received. Ah, yeah. Which means it's good to think. Let him not imagine. Which means it's good to imagine. Ah. Let him imagine. That that thing has happened. Ah! <laughs> I have asked in faith. I think like it. Now that's how I'll be living. That's the way I'll be talking. Because it is in me as the man thinks so he is. Baliko savrahata kaba. Marako jalamanda. Karizo valahaya. In the name of Jesus. Now pray with that amazing instruction. Those prophetic words. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and thank God. Go ahead and declare. 
bring those thinking and imaginations. Bring them down. Razila Paragadosh. Rapaliga Sata. It is good to think that way. I can imagine the right thing now. I know it is happening. Hey, Shalapata. Shalapata. Le Costa. Rapelato. Melambo. Rata le brigadesh, malambra diga sakata, maradoda kabasata. Listen, there is something God is telling me right now. Now, much as we have prayed, and we still do, some people need to learn how to maintain the power after prayer. Because how some people get to the previous state they have been before, even after praying for long, is because they don't know how to keep the power. They don't know how to keep the power. Every time Jesus would pray and come from the mountain, he would be confronted by a demon. He would always have attacks. That's the same, the same thing God is telling me to tell you. He went to the mountain, he came back, he found a demon-possessed man. He went to pray somewhere and then he came and found uh, Peter's mother-in-law sick. Something you may realize. Can I have a seat? Something that you need to realize is you need to know how to use the power. Every time Jesus went to pray and he was confronted by the devil, he would always win. Now, as we finish praying and you go home, keep in mind of the power you have generated. Remember the Bible says, and Jesus returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. And he went to the, to the synagogue. What you need to know in the scripture when he's reading Isaiah 61 in Luke 4.18, he began to speak and demons began to manifest. One of the things that power does is to make demons visible. If indeed we have prayed and we do pray and we have prayed and we have generated the power, then demons are going to be visible. Because you cannot tell the difference of power if there is no demon. This power is to contract demons and have things working. You may assume you are ordinary like the way you have been. No. Something has happened. And God just gave me wisdom to give to you. That even as we finish, learn to maintain the power. You can maintain the power in the mind. By consciousness. Continuously being conscious that I have power. I have prayed. I am different. Something has happened. Changes have been wrought. That consciousness is what you need to maintain the power in the prayer. Otherwise, the devil is going to rob you your victory. That's what God told me. That's why the greatest time to be careful about temptations is after prayer. The reason why Jesus said, pray that you don't enter temptations can be the snare to enter into temptations if you forget you have prayed. You get what I'm talking about? The very reason he said pray that you don't enter can be the reason if a man forgets that he has prayed, it will be like nothing has happened. So be conscious. Be wise and be conscious. Be awakened. Awaken your senses to these realities. That something has happened. You are not the same way you came. You are a thousand times better than the man who didn't come. That is one of the aspects of academy. Is to bring transformation. 
That's why we sometimes call it the prayer camp. Transformers prayer camp. Because you must be transformed from the inside. So you need to know that. That will even make you more careful how to, uh, to speak to people. Because you may move out and people annoy you. Be careful because you may release your power. Or it may drain you for the wrong thing. If you attempt to slap anyone after prayer, it will be very dangerous. They can even die. Because the same power. Praise God. Attend to her. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So, that's what God was telling me. That believers usually become powerless after prayer. Because they don't know how to keep the power. The power. Keep it in the mind. Number two, keep it by speaking. When we speak, we maintain it. Because that is faith. Confession. We acknowledge and confirm the things we are prayed about. God, he was just warning me. He said, warn them because this power they have received is too much. So don't yield to evil work. Don't yield to the work of the flesh. Don't yield to temptation. Don't yield to the work of the flesh because you will drain that power. You will drain it. You will drain it. Have self-control. Even the way you talk to people. Don't be so much disclosed to people for the next number of days until you're sure this power has served this purpose. If you've been so much used to talking to people a lot, don't do that. Don't do that. You will know what I'm talking about. Because if you give yourself into talking unnecessary things, unless you are talking in the word, but this praying for long cannot be poured out in one minute. And now you think you're going to enter your discussion of laughing and talking. And I will, no, it's not going to be that way. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Be conscious and speak. And always a vision. A vision. That means see. And vision. See. Always see that power working in whatever thing that is wanting in your life. Envision it and let it work. That is active living. Praise God. Be conscious. Have it always in you. In your being. You know it is there. Be conscious and speak it. And envision it. Which means even when you come to pray. You envision. Have the image of it. Have the picture of it. The things that have happened. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your right hand. Father in the name of Jesus. We give you praise. For the word that we have shared. Thank you for the time we have had in prayer. We will never remain the same again. This same message. Will lift us. We will never remain the same again. These that have been to the academy of oh God. They will be focused. They will be resilient. They will be available. They will serve you with one heart. They will not depart. They will be good disciples. They will always be here to listen to your word. They will not be distracted. They will not be taken out of the way. In the name of Jesus. You will give full attention to these ones. You will prosper them. In the name of Jesus. Nothing outside the world will be mighty for them. Nothing outside the world will be great for them. Nothing outside in the world will be so important to them. They will not live to please men. They will honor you. They will be available for you. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Wow, this has been so powerful. Is it already free? Ah, I thought it was one. Can you imagine you prayed for all that while? That's what we mean by fasting and prayer. For us, if we fast, we really fast and pray. We don't fast and then watch movies. 
We don't fast and eat in the evening. 